Yeah, that sounds like it's on. That sounds like it's on for sure. Tyler, take us off the uh, the bumper screen. Let's see the real thing. That's it. That's what it's supposed to look like. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys. Guys, gals. Hey there, all you cool, uncomfortable cats and kittens. That's a throwback. Remember about this time last year, that's when everyone started to figure out the Tiger King was a thing. Yeah, I remember that. Do you watch Tiger King? I watched it with uh, Parker back in Texas. Oh, back in the... That's that's a real pandemic throwback right there, going all the way back to hanging out with in, Tex, in Texas with Parker. I was trapped in Texas for six weeks. Yeah, you just you weren't allowed to leave. I could have left after a bit, but why nah. would I come back to L.A.? Why would you come back to L.A.? L.A. was a fucking nightmare. It was a huge nightmare. Whoo, boy. Yeah. What a shit show. Anyway, speaking of shit shows, hi. Welcome to the Discomfort Zone, everybody. I'm your host, Jay Light. That uh, guy who is a very tall man is Tyler Mesnerich, my producer. And we're here, as always, to hear about your uncomfortable situations that you've put yourselves in. Because the discomfort zone is a judgment-free zone where we want you to tell us your deepest, darkest secrets. We want you to tell us the stuff that you have done, the stuff that you've been privy to, that you regret, that you feel like was a mistake. We want to hear about the times that you wore blackface to be a cosplay character. We want to hear about the time that you... uh, Argued with your dad about whether or not the Holocaust was real, uh, despite your family being Jewish. Uh, We want to hear about what other stuff did we have we heard about before? Starseed and Trulia last week they won. Yeah, they were living on a farm. They were uh, they regretted a whole bunch of stuff. It sounded like that they weren't allowed to talk about. Yeah, there was a a cop who was taking a shower. He wasn't allowed to come talk to them. A shower. He was showered in blood, I think. Um, And anyway, we want to hear about all that stuff because you deserve to be honored for the things that you've done that have made yourself uncomfortable. Because at the time, you had no way of getting out of it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to reward you for your own foibles and mishaps with prizes. This month's prize. This week, this this episode's prize. Got to start calling them episodes. Write that down. Um, This episode's prize, the Colonnades, Literary and Art Journal of Elon University. That's right. Did you ever want to read a bunch of poetry, essays, and short stories by people who are aged 18 to 21? Maybe 24. I know there are a couple people who published in this book who had a little bit older uh, older college experience. Wow. Including me? I'm published in this. This is from my senior year at Elon University. And this, this is a classic. This is, this has uh, a little bit of water damage. But I'm okay with giving it away because it's got a little bit of water damage. I kept one for myself. But I'm a published author because of this. And also because I published uh, a bullshit blog that I wrote on Audible, uh, not Audible, on Amazon's Kindle Singles program. Uh, is it true that it has water damage because you read your stuff to a woman and she... She got uh, her feminine... Well, there's two options there. It's either she cried because of how beautiful it was, or she got wet with her lady juices. Yeah, I'm going to leave it open. Both. Why Why decide? I'm the decider, I think. I choose. I mean, I choose who wins and who loses in the discomfort zone. We had a lot of great people competing the past couple times, right? You can see all their names right here, right? We had last week's winners, Starseed and Trulia. We had Chess Devil, Waddles Barkley, Terrence, Chris with the C, and Alex Jones, who unfortunately did not return our calls and uh, and his prize got forfeited to Starseed and Trulia, who they just I sent their uh, their package out today, so they should be getting it pretty soon. Starseed Trulia, if y'all are watching, I hope you get it. Um, but we want to hear about the stuff, of course, to compete. We want to hear about the mistakes you made this week, the worst mistake you made this week. But we also, for our prize task, for our prize our prize category, 
to get to that round, we want to hear about the uh, the time that you got drunk on a holiday and did something you regret. It was St. Patrick's Day this week. Okay, a classic holiday of drunkenness, cultural appropriation for half Irish people like myself. This is a, an absolute disgrace what you people have done. I'm very happy that there was no proper St. Patrick's Day celebration this year. And so what we're going to do instead is we're going to allow you to talk about the foibles and the times you got too drunk on a holiday and what you did that you regret. It doesn't have to be St. Patrick's Day, by the way. It can be Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Grandparents' Day, Martin Luther King Day. Good day. It's a good day to get drunk and, and, and do something wrong, Martin Luther oh, yeah. King Day. That's like, that's not a holiday I see people pre-gaming for. Oh, no. No way. What, uh, what, what about you, Tyler? What's the drunkest you ever got on a holiday? Drunkest I ever got on a holiday? Um, I did once go to, uh, I was in Casper, Wyoming for New Year's. Mm -hmm. My parents live in Casper, Wyoming. And um, I decided to drink a bunch with them. And a uh, very white state, there's only one black person there, and he was the DJ. And he was playing country music, and I walked up to him really drunk, and I was like, you don't want to play this, do you? And <laughs> he's like, no, I don't. And it was pretty cool. Uh, and then I got really drunk, and my parents paid for it. It was fun. Nice. But that doesn't sound like a regretful thing at all. Oh, no, no. I uh, got probably too drunk, and my parents were like, do you drink, do this all the time? I was like, no, because I'm not, you're paying for it. Usually mm. I'm paying for it, and I just were like, I'm done. That's fair. I don't want to buy anymore. I can't remember what the drunkest yeah. thing I ever did on a holiday was, which makes sense given how drunk I used to get. Yeah. Um, I do know, I'm going to assume that this was around a holiday. I was in, um, I was in college. You were in a fraternity. You understand fraternity oh, theme yeah. parties. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Valentine's Day, we had a theme party that was handles and handcuffs. Okay. And you and your date are handcuffed, are together. handcuffed together. Okay. And you're supposed to have a handle of alcohol. You usually go with a, a fifth and not a handle. Yeah. And uh, you're supposed to finish it together over the course of the night. Very romantic. Very romantic. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I, uh, I think I lost the key that night. We couldn't undo the handcuffs. Oh, no. We had to split it. <laughs> Them's the brakes. Yeah, so you like chopped it in half? Mm -hmm. Hacksawed it. You ha you, so you got drunk and you hacksawed handcuffs? On off a date. You? Off of me and, and my, and my semi-willing date. Were you dressed somewhat like this? Yeah. And she was dressed up? She was dressed up. She had her Lily Pulitzer on what or her mess. Vineyard Vines. Oh, total mess. <laughs> total fucking disaster. <laughs> oh, actually, no. I have something better now that I think about it. This is really bad. Okay. This is actually bad. I got in trouble with my fraternity for doing this one. Um, Mardi Gras. Yeah. That's a classic holiday. Of course. For drunkards. Beads. And um, I made, we had a, a holiday party. It was a, a, a Mardi Gras party. And I made a, a purple purple drank bucket, which had uh, vodka and Robitussin in it. Oh. Ooh. Oh, boy. And we told people what was in it. We had a regular one, and then we had this other one. We were like, do you want to get, do you want to, do you want to drink Robitussin? And a lot of people got very uh, robo-tripped out that night. Yeah, I bet. And I had, this is the craziest part about looking like me and getting away with shit like this is that I, at, at the chapter meeting that week, because everybody fucking knew about it, um, somebody actually came to the party beforehand when we were making it, and they're like, do not make this. This is a terrible idea. And we were like, nah, fuck it. We'll just tell people. If We'll give them the option. We're not going to, like, dose anybody. Yeah. But I, uh, at, the, at the chapter meeting, president of the chapter was like, hey, I heard there was a Robitussin bucket at the party this weekend. Um, whoever did that needs to like fess up because that you you cannot do that. It's absolutely like right. you're gonna get a you got to go to standards for that, right? And the standards is the tribunal for frat for frat boys. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And I and I went to the guy and I owned up to it, and he was like, you did that. Ah, all right, don't do that again. <laughs> didn't even get a, didn't even get a slap on the wrist. I got a ah, you're good. Wow, because wow. this allows me to get away with a lot. 
It's called uh, it's called privilege. Yes. Got yes. That, got that privilege. Got that privilege. And then you wrote a poem about it, and now it's in the. And now it's in Colonnades. Yeah, there you go. And you can read it if you win. I think we have we have uh, I we know do. we have a caller already on the line. We have a caller, somebody that we know. You know, he's okay. he's caused a lot of issues. Ooh. With uh, around certain, I wouldn't call them holidays, but is inf- it our, infamous our, days our friend Terrence? in American history. Um, he might have been responsible for 9-11. I think he had something to do with... Uh, he had something to do with 9-11. He had something to do with the... Which is a holiday, kind of. It's a, I guess... At this point? Well, some people celebrate it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, he had something to do with the insurrection. Yep. If I remember right? And Capital like, insurrection, yeah. I think he's missed yeah. some toes. He, he's, yeah, he's missing all of his toes. missing toes, yeah. I think he's missing... Well, he's he only put, got like one or two toes left. He had a bet that, that Trump was going to win, and mm-hmm. that didn't turn out so well. No. And then he also helped shut down the Texas power grid. That's right. Because he flipped the switch. Yeah. And he may have had a kid that he sold in Mexico, but then it turned out it was a drug trip. Yeah. He's got, he's got a lot of stuff. He's got a lot on. of stuff. Well, if, if you want to try and beat Terrence... Feel free to call in 818-8-REGRET. Numbers at the bottom of the screen, 818-874. It's about to flash over. 818-873-4738. But let's go ahead and talk to Terrence, who's on the line. Pop him in here. Oh, hello? Hello. Oh, wow. What a great introduction uh, from Tyler. He sounds like my lawyer. Is he? I'm not responsible for all these things. I'm just saying I'm a guy in the wrong place. At the wrong time, okay? Okay, so it's all just alleged then. None of this stuff that you told us you did is actually you. It's just alleged. Uh, the only one I could be directly tied to is maybe the challenger. I screwed up the button. <laughs> it was my old job to wire it, and it was supposed to feed oxygen to the, the spaceship, but it actually uh, made it explode. That's great. But, Wait, ha- Terrence, you know, how old are you? That's not a, because the Challenger was in the 80s. Look, let's not get into this age thing. It's nothing okay. but a number. I've been in the workforce since I was very young. That that was my first job. <laughs> was working I mean, at NASA, <laughs> getting ready to press the button? Yeah, you know, I, just like you with your privilege, you know, I know some people in high places. And at age 16, you can get a job at NASA. If you're connected enough. All right. I mean, hey, I can't argue with that. I don't know enough higher ups at NASA to uh, to compete and get a job. But I'm glad you did, and you've had some learning experiences. And Terrence, I'm so happy to have you on the air again. Well, thank you, because it, it sounded like you didn't the way that you were saying I was responsible for 9/11 and stuff. Now and listen, I just worked at the FAA for one day on September 11th and was summarily fired but let's not get into that okay no let's not get into that that's all in the past i care about the present you care about the present yeah just forget about that 9-11 stuff yeah just forget 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 yeah i've been trying to say that since september 12th i sold shirts and said forget (laughs) and you know they did not sell well and it's part of the financial situation i'm in right now that's fair did you finance that with any of your other body parts? No, oh, no. You know, I, look, I've learned you do not bet with the mafia, okay? You lose appendages. Back then, I was just putting up, you know, houses I inherited, uh, historical sites my family owned. Um, historical sites? I actually have made a lot of money off of, uh, I sold uh, an Indian burial ground plot to Walmart. Okay, how much money did you make off that deal? No, solid 50 Gs, 50 large. 50 large, okay. Yep. I mean, that's a pretty good deal on uh, on some native land, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, 25% of it was in uh, gift cards, so. Am- uh, uh, Walmart gift cards? Yes, they actually don't inflate. With a uh, regular currency, little known fact. Okay, it's a good hedge against inflation, then. Yeah, exactly. That must you, be you, why now you're talking my language. That must be why all the email scammers and uh, and people across the across the the pond there love calling in and getting people to buy gift cards. 
Oh, absolutely. It's like cryptocurrency, so I, I, no. but a, p- a piece of exactly which a piece of plastic. Yep, you're exactly right. It's a piece of plastic though that is backed by a Walmart, one of the America's greatest institutions. You walk in there, everyone's happy. You know, it's a solid business. Now, I Terrence, I, as much as I love talking about. Uh, how you've benefited from capitalism due to your privilege. I want to know, well, let's get back to the present. I want to hear about what the biggest mistake you made this week was. Uh, biggest mistake I made? Oh, what? definitely adopting that child. You adopted a child this week. Well, you know, me and my wife, we've been in the process for so long. It got pushed back a little bit because of uh, I was in the hospital, you know, the toe thing. Uh, and right, right. You know, there had to be a review on if I could be a good father with, you know, uh, artificial toes. But Artificial toes? I, yeah, I, I got artificial toes now. Oh, cool. I didn't know that was a Prosthetic. thing. Prosthetic. You strap it on. I got to be honest. I've lost most of them, so I've replaced them with uh, like hot dogs. You get a little like dried out hot dogs. Some little smokies. Yeah, basically. Nice. But we don't need to get into what my toes look like. Okay, what is this? A, a no OnlyFans show? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody keeps up with the times. All right. So, uh, so you adopted a child. You well, de- you're dealing well, with stuff with I your wife. Shouldn't say it like that. I thought I was adopting a child. Let's just say that. Okay. So you thought you were adopting a child. What What thought. happened? Thought. You thought. Look, I don't think this thing is a kid, all right? I think this thing is a Peruvian middle-aged man with some sort of hormone disorder, I gotta be honest with you, because sometimes when he catches the light, I swear to God, he's, I, I can see liver spots on the guy. Okay, well, so how did this come to be? Like, where did you go? Did, did you go to an adoption agency or an orphanage? Or like, what's the deal? Literally, what well, was the deal you know, that you made? That, no, that takes, years okay so what i did was i went on the dark web and i searched uh buy kids and i found a lot of stuff that disturbed me but you know then i land on this one and the the picture is clearly not the same kid all right and they say that you know they will actually pay you to adopt the child and i'm thinking hey I'm going to turn a profit on this little brat. My wife's been nagging me. Your sperm's no good. I want to have a kid. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here. And adopt this child. Raise him as my own. Okay. And get paid. uh, I swear to God, you know, I I go to the uh, the pickup site. Uh, It's right on the docks. And I swear to God, from a distance, I thought I saw him smoking a cigarette, but I can't confirm it. Well, okay, sometimes kids are allowed to smoke cigarettes in other countries. It's fair. Yeah, it looks like he's been smoking since before he was born, all right? This this kid's got full-on wrinkles. Okay. Anyway, so we do the handoff, right? Okay, we do the handoff. The house, everything seems fine, you know? But, uh... It's time to, you know, let him take a bath, right? Okay. They tell me that this is a 10-year-old ten, boy, right? He comes out of the bath, and I swear to God, you know, I'm look, I'm not a pervert or anything, but there was a bulge I, I can't ignore, all right? This this toddler, basically, this 10-year-old boy is hanging, hanging dong like I've never seen before. Well, ten, a 10-year-old's not a toddler. Let's make that distinction. That's like somebody who could be going through puberty, could have hit the hormones early, could have hit the hormonal lottery like Tyler did. Thank you. Thank you. He, he's got a raspy cough. This kid has not stopped coughing the whole time. You hear that? I do hear that. I did hear that in the background. Wait, is he watching hey, you right now? 
Go to bed, slugger. Uh, okay, I'll tuck you in, in in a little bit there. Did you hear? You hear that? I do hear that. That is not that. That is not a child's voice. That's not a child's voice. You you adopted a, an adult. You adopted a Peruvian adult and were paid. This is so. Is this a crime? I don't know. <laughs> Tyler, you're a legal well, expert. Well, my lawyer... You know, my lawyer thinks that if I'm a complete dipshit, he wants to go with a dipshit defense. He wants to say I'm a total dipshit. I didn't realize I was human trafficking. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the big question is how did you get the kid here? Did you actually file the correct paperwork for that child? Well, it sounds like if he was on the dark web, there's no paperwork involved. So I think that's illegal oh, there, for sure. Yeah, there, there was a lot, a lot of paperwork involved. You know, like I... Um, I got, you know, like at least two or three letters in the mail saying, hey, pick your kid up at the docks at this time. And we you know, we got a lot of there. people in the chat right now who are concerned for uh, your well-being or the child's well-being. We got Wizworld Live uh, said, oh, no. We have Kegel, who's, uh, who said this is a full-on wrinkle child and sounds like a large child. I mean, if, it, it, I don't think it's a kid. It, it's... It's not a child. I think you got a, a a man. Okay, you've described the kid, but you haven't described like physically. They how tall is this person? This kid, man. Well, that's that's what I was saying about the hormone disorder. All right, he's a solid four feet tall. Okay. 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 But he, he he you know. And he's reasonably skinny, all right? You, you would almost say it's a boy's body, okay? Except a little bit, you know, smushed down, if that makes sense. But that doesn't was... make sense. I don't know what that means. So he's he's, just, he's know, tall, and he's short and skinny, but he's got a slender... He's a slender man. Is he stocky? Look, I, I don't know adjectives. Okay. All right. Descriptors are difficult for me. I'm just paranoid because when you look at this face, I mean, this kid, I, I think he has a tattoo. He keeps saying it's a freckle, but I think he's got a swastika tattoo right under his eye. It's real small. You may have uh, definitely noticed. You may have adopted a prisoner off of like a off a prison ship. Are those still a thing? Yeah, I think so. Prison boats? Maybe like someone from the cartel. That seems like it's like a high caliber woof. I mean, oh, well, Terrence, that that's a... <laughs> the guys, uh, you know, holding the guns at the docks and everything. That was weird, I thought. I don't know why he would have a swastika if he's in a cartel. That seems like they're kind of at odds with each other, too. Maybe he's are you sure it's a swastika tattoo? Or... Are, you, are you sure it's yeah, not just so... a freckle? It could just be a freckle. Some people do yeah. that. They have freckles under their well, eyes. Are you apologizing for Nazis right now? Just saying they have freckle eyes? No, it's. I don't I know, know who. who I don't. You're apologizing for uh, for human trafficking. Well, it was an accident. Oh boy, we've got people. I thought I was getting a kid. I thought I was buying a kid online. I wasn't trying to buy a full grown adult online. Listen, we got a lot of people. In the chat now, they're very concerned. They're saying you're harboring. They're asking if you're harboring a fugitive. They can't believe the human trafficker flipped that around on you. I mean, you got got. Someone's saying this is surrogate partner therapy. I don't know what that means, but sounds like you're getting involved in some stuff. What does your wife think about this? She, oh, my wife. She, you know, she's been crying this entire time. She's locked up, you know, in the attic, and I actually haven't heard a lot of. A lot of noise from down there recently. You know, she Wait, took, she's she locked up in the attic. attic. I'm not going to yeah. gloss over that. No, nah, she just she just went up there. She said, "I I, I got to you know go read or something." She just went up there with her, you know, stool and her rope, just like she does. Well, I guess that was the first time she was doing that, but you know, it just seemed like something she does. Oh boy. Terrence, you've wo you've wo you've woven a a very dark and tangled web, almost like the dark web that you went on to engage in human trafficking. And 
I mean, that's a big ass mistake. So you get for sure 500 points. That's right off the bat. No bones about it. And, but the real question here is, can you win the prize round? And I do think there are other people who who should be calling in. I know we got people watching. If you think you can beat Terrence's story and win over Terrence, which may happen, we're going to see how shitty his prize story is because he's, he's hit a rock solid 500 point full bagger with the uh, with his human trafficking adoption tale. So call in 8188regret 8188734738 if you think you can beat Terrence's story. If we got some lonely some lonely hearts out there, feel free to call in. But I do want to hear what is the drunkest you ever got? What's the drunk what's what how do we phrase it? Something you did when you were drunk on a holiday that you regret. There we go. By the way, well, I was Malcolm XOXO, you're in the right place. If you're discomforted, this is where you're supposed to be. You're in the discomfort zone. Terrence, go ahead. Well, you know, it might be cheating, but honestly, I was drunk that one day I worked at the FAA, and I know it's not a holiday, but it is a pretty famous day. Well, now you're just phoning it in. That's not... You can't... It's. You already call... I feel like that's cheating to call in something that you already won okay, prizes for. I, look, I get drunk on a lot of holidays. Oh, I got drunk this Christmas, and uh, I lost my RV. You lost your RV on Christmas. Okay. How'd you do that? Yeah, I, I, took, a, I took a road trip down to Nashville. I'm thinking I want to see the South. I want to see what this hip new you know, city's all about. I get... Blackout hammered, right? And I wake up in the middle of the street. My RV's gone. I can't find that shit anywhere. I lose my phone, completely disconnected from the world for the rest of the day. You know, make my way back home, and that was that. Terrence. Wow. You know what well, happened? Do you know what happened to your RV? Did you ever figure it out? No, no, I've never heard anything about it. You know, Did you give it to a guy? I didn't have a phone. Well, I was hanging out with a guy that night, but I don't think he took it. He seemed like a solid dude. Well, did you ever hear back from him? Was his no, name he Anthony? Said he was away for a while. I didn't know. I didn't know what he meant, but he, he was like, "Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on, man." Yeah, was his name Anthony? Yeah, Tony. Oh. Tony. <laughs> Terrence, I hate to break it to weird. you. <laughs> he was weird? What? Tell me about tell me about how weird he was. Uh, you know, just one of those guys who you know, let's ask him about sports and he's talking about, you know, like how they're gonna beam five G rays into your ears, but real solid dude. <sighs> he he tipped the bartender like five percent. All right, we've got a photo pulled up here. Tyler, I want you to just, to just ask some questions. We're going to play Guess Who, but with, uh, with your friend Tony here. So this Tony guy, you have a bit of a crazed look in his eyes? Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of, but he's a passionate guy, you know, and that's what I liked about him. Oh, yeah, what was he passionate about? Uh, you know, government stuff, politics. He was passionate about politics. Passionate about it. Yeah, uh, he definitely said he hated Christmas. So he's a real uh, Grinch. Oh, oh, I think he he said he hated science because he kept talking about this Big Bang that was coming. I was like, oh, okay. This this is wild. Terrence, um... I was hammered. I don't remember half of it. You were hammered. So that's, I mean, that's on you. You, uh... I don't think he knows. You know, I don't think, he knows, I don't what think happened. he knows what happened. There was a there was a, an oh, RV what? that blew up in Nashville on uh, Christmas, the very early hours of Christmas Day. What? Yeah, I'm looking. At, I mean, I'm looking at the footage right well, here. Well, well, you know, uh, Nashville is a pretty uh, big city. Okay, so it wasn't probably anywhere near around where I left it near that AT&T building. No, it that's right, right where it was. <laughs> what? 
Also, why would you just what leave it there? About? Did you not go back to try and see if it was right by the AT&T building where you left it? This is on you. No, dude, I, I, it was not there. I was three streets over. I, I figured I must have moved it. I looked up and down the entire street I was on. I went over one other street, didn't see it, and said, you know what? You know, let's let's cut bait. Time to get on back home. Oh, Terrence. So here's, I mean, this is a tricky one. Because I think, all right, you let's put... Terrence, we're gonna pop you back into this into the uh, into the queue for a minute here, so Tyler and I can confer. By the way, if you think you can beat Terrence's stories, feel free to call in. We still got time for some other contenders. Eight one eight. Where do I point? Eight one eight eight regret. Eight one eight eight seven three four seven three eight. That is the number you dial to try and win uh, my book of terrible college poetry and other people's better college poetry and essays. Um, Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, we're in a situation I and mean, we've got people calling for, for negative points. Right. I think I agree with that. Malcolm XOXOXO XOXO is calling for negative points, which I think makes sense. No, I think I agree with that because here's the thing. Um, it is obviously very regretful for somebody to loan their RV to a guy that blew up part of Nashville. Yes. But Terrence didn't actually regret that because he didn't know it happened. Yeah. He's just regretting that he must have lost his RV. Right. He's regretting having lost the RV. That's yeah. the big problem. Which I, you know, I feel like it's not worth as many points to just lose the RV. And I do think he should probably get a little bit punished for. Yeah, because you get, people get drunk and lose stuff all the time. Yeah. Like, I don't want to, like, this is nothing to do yeah. really with Terrence's life. Like, Terrence didn't sound like he's phased by this loss at all. No, no. And I think that he's kind of, thro- he, I mean, he already th- tried to throw it in our faces and do the do the the, the FAA reference yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just, <sighs> just can't have that. Yeah, I, I can't I, have that kind of behavior on the discomfort zone. I will not allow for people who try and pull one over on us and repeat stories. Absolutely. I'm with the group chat. I think you should lose points. Okay. So we've got people uh, like Malcolm XOXO calling for negative points. I th- And what kind of stories? We're looking for stories of uh, the biggest mistake you made this week, and then we also want to hear about stuff you did when you got drunk on a holiday that you regret. So feel free to call in, Malcolm XOXO. I think I see you interested in, in trying to get some points here. Um, as far as losing points goes... I think we take him down. I don't know about taking him down a full 500. That seems a little like overkill. But maybe we take half. Take 250. 250. So we're going down. Losing half his points. Going down to 250 points. Now let's go ahead and bring Terrence back on the air. Because Terrence is still currently the top contender. He could win the prize today. But hopefully... Somebody else calls in. 818-8-REGRET. 818-873-4738. Terrence, we have passed judgment. Yeah, we have passed. And, and, and this is a judgment on on uh, on how we had to handle well, your points. Did you, you, you? What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, no, I was, I was listening. You don't, you don't have to explain, but I just really want to step in and say I, I just really feel for all the victims that were involved, all the people who lost their lives that it would. Wait, exactly how many people lost their lives that day? I, just, I, I usually don't want to know this. Just day. one. Just the guy who stole your RV. Tony. Tony. Oh, this is not even close to the worst thing I've done, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I'm saying. So this is definitely, you should lose points for that. Um, Terrence, you've, uh, you've lost some points, but you're still the top contender, so we're going to keep uh, you on the line. Right, so wait, we're crying over lost points? property here i mean come on guys i mean actually that is that is that is kind of in uh in in the capitalist you gave me vein for that. The, the anti-capitalist vein that the show kind of has but here's the thing i mean it, 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 you heard what we said it's not about something that you it it's just not it's just not up to snuff with what we were hoping for from you terrence and i guess that's you know that's partially our fault because when you make expectations you expect you and me. Um, oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to uh, 
regret things in a harder way for your Tell show. you what. All right, we're going to give you 50 more points. We're going to give you 50 points back. You're going to get 300 points. Ooh, All right, you fucking, back, baby. you fucking whiner. Um, all right, we have uh, no by AC Improv. We have no updates on the cult. If you've heard from Starseed and Trulia, we did send their their mail out today, so they wouldn't have gotten it by now. But they could win again. We need some callers. We need. We have time for uh, uh by my reckoning, one more caller, maybe two. We got to hear some stories. I want to hear some stories of the things you regret. Uh, happening this week pa- Terrence we're going to pop you back into the into the weight room and um, we'll talk to you soon call in 818-873-4738 please call in because I, I know there's people out there with some stories alright I know it's going they've been waiting what's going on we don't see anyone here. There's no. There's literally. If someone's calling in, there's literally no one else in on the in the screening room. So maybe hang up and try again. If you've been waiting to call, there we go. Now we see somebody. I don't know what happened. That was weird. What do I regret? Well, talk to him, and I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna say what I regret. I already told what I regretted. I regretted making a, a bucket for a college party that had Robitussin in it. That's the thing that I regret. There was a goof that I did, and I atoned for it by saying I did something. And then they gave me not even a slap on the wrist because Greek life culture is fucked up. Um, all right. We got somebody on the line. I'm assuming it's Malcolm XOXO. We're going to find out soon. They're in the screening room with Tyler right now. Um, I think we got somebody. Who do we got, Tyler? Throw them in. We got Tootsie. Tootsie, well, you, hello. you are on the air. Hi, how are you? Well, hello. How, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How about you? Oh, well, I heard you were you were taking regrets, and I just, I'm very, I have a lot of regrets. Well, we're looking for specific regrets uh, from this past week. So is there something you did past this past week that you regret? Um, well, I I told my my ex husband that he could move back into my house. <sighs> I mean, that's that a, was my biggest regret this week. That's a big goof. Did he? Did he like? How did this? How did this conversation happen? Was it his idea? Was it your idea? Well, you know, he's a he's a bit of a a, a nomad sort of man, you know. He's a uh, he's a bit of a a, a a traveler. Okay. He's a bit of a, a salesperson. He travels for work a lot. Okay. Um, and you know he uh, he he landed himself in uh in a bit of a a, a bit of a situation. Okay, in a bit of a situation. Uh, Yes, and you know, um, well, it was just recently St. Patrick's Day, and um, you were asking about getting drunk on a holiday and doing things that we regret, and you know, we oh, we're wheeling stuff in together. I like that. Okay, what'd you do? Our anniversary, our anniversary is on St. Patrick's Day. That's when we met. Oh, that's sweet. I was feeling real, real sentimental. For the good times, and you just and you know I, he was he was being all all sweet to me again, saying, "Oh, we should have we should have a an anniversary drink." And I said, "We're not together anymore." And he said, "Well, we could toast to what could have been." And I fell for it. Damn it! You fell for it, I indeed. Fell for it. That guy's a sweet talker. I fell what, for it. What is he? He's a good salesman. What does he sell? You know, I, you know, he he used to sell dimes. He was always getting cut up on his hand. Uh, you know, he used to sell knives a lot, and um, I, I think that's mostly 
mostly what he sells because you know he uh he's always you know uh just always got his his set of knives on him he's he's quite a a a, a chef a sh- I, I okay okay so he's got knives well yeah he's not he's well like he's not a chef but you know he always he's he considers himself a chef because you know a chef always has their knives with them and um, and, and so he's, he's kind of like a chef in that and, way. And he, did he tell you that a chef always has their knives on them? Uh, yes, of, of course. Isn't that something everybody knows? Oh, Tootsie. I mean, I hate to break it to you, but I know, I know chefs and they do not always have their knives on them. In fact, they usually only have them on them when they're going to work. So if somebody's got their knives on them all the time, oh. you oh, might not shit. be dealing with a chef. That is some bullshit. I'm sorry, I gotta call bullshit when I hear it, and that's some bullshit. Ooh, I. This is not the show. This is not the bullshit zone. This is the discomfort zone. And Tootsie, I will say this: this is something for you and your uh-huh. your your man to work out on your own. But good news is, right now, okay. I'm gonna make you new points leader because you because oh you found a way to wheel in both topics for this week in the same call. And I respect that, even though I don't respect okay. uh, that you have uh, backslid with a dangerous person in your life. So I'm going to give you, okay. let's say, I think it's a pretty a pretty average time for both. So let's say, what's three, what's, what's uh, 600? 600 total. You get 300 for the first round, 300 oh. for the second. And you're a current leader. Okay. So we're gonna pop oh my you. Goodness. We're gonna pop you back into the queue. Terrence, unfortunately, is now out of contention. So we're gonna pop Terrence out. Thank you for playing, Terrence. And we have one final contestant with one final amount of time. So let's go ahead and bring them in. Tyler, who are we gonna be talking to? Uh, talking to uh, Sarah. Talking to Sarah. Okay. So let's, bring right now. Let's, bra- uh, let's bring her in. Sarah, Hi. hello. You hello. are you are live on the discomfort zone. Okay, I want a medium pizza. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just oh, kidding. <laughs> he, he almost had me going there, Sarah. That would have been that would have been oh uncomfortable. God. Oh boy. I right. <laughs> I'm gonna score points on yeah. on me for that. Uh, hi, welcome. <laughs> yeah, um, I I do like do prank calls though, but yeah, I just yeah, I'm calling in. What's up? How are you? What's up? I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm okay. I I really do need to order a pizza though. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can do that after. Maybe you win the prize, and maybe you can sell it on the uh, somewhere and get some pizza money for it. But what are we gonna do here? We're gonna talk about the biggest thing you regret this week. So Sarah, lay it on us. What you got? Okay, it has to be from this week, right? Not childhood. We'll go with this week. That's fine. We can go with so, this week. Um. Okay. So my um my like. I live, like, in an apartment complex, and my neighbors next door, like, we're best friends. So we just, like, go, like, their door's always open. I always just, like, go in there or, okay. like, come in here, you know? Right. And, um, but we're not friends with, like, everyone in the complex, just the neighbors. Anyway, yeah, so it was my neighbor's birthday, and then I heard a bunch of people singing happy birthday. And so I was, like, in my underwear, but I was, like, whatever, it's my neighbor, we're best friends. So I like ran outside and was like, happy birthday. And it was a different neighbor. It was like this mean French guy. Oh, like he, I guess, also was having a birthday and his door was open. There was like all these like people and then they all looked at me and it was so bad. Yeah, and then and then I was like, no, it's, just, it's my friend's birthday, too. And then I went to open the door and it was locked and I ran into it. <laughs> it sounds like some wacky Looney Tunes esque. Uh, regret. How are how's your how's your body after you ran into a door? Uh, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I bruise really easily, but I'm not like hurt. Okay, yeah. I'm hurt emotionally. Your pride is bruised. Your body is bruised, and you uh yeah. you pissed off the mean French guy who's your neighbor who you don't like. And I think yeah, he's, a... he's just this guy. You always see him. He will like never speak to you. Like he's so weird. Yeah. What's how long have you lived next to him? Like a couple years, honestly. Like this complex has so many weird people in it. Like I was at the 
at a neighbor's house again and there was like all this noise coming from upstairs like crashing and like screaming and stuff and we we're like oh shit okay like, some girl's getting her ass kicked and so we like went up there to try to like save this girl you know right and then uh we like knocked on the door and the guy opened the door and he was just like wiping sweat off and he was like what do you need and I, we were like damn you need to stop beating your girlfriend is what we need and he was like uh, we said, what are you doing? And he said, uh, playing soccer. And we we're like, don't do that. Classic French answer. <laughs> don't do that. But damn. He still does it. This is uh, this is wild. I mean, I want to hear more about this French guy. Did you... Let me ask you this, Sarah, before we go further, because I I, I'm intrigued by this Frenchman who you have a beef with in your in your apartment complex. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to give you some points, first of all, because I do think you had a nice little benign regret. That's a very human regret. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, um, let's see. I'm going to give you a nice little 250 points for that. So you're still in contention. Okay. And I want to hear what uh-huh. you, what it, but the question I have is you getting drunk on a holiday is the, is the thing that we're talking about this week. But have you been drunk on any holidays around the people in your apartment complex, like the French guy or your other neighbors who you don't like? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I want to hear about that specifically. Give me a story with that. Okay. Awesome. So I moved the day I moved in. Okay. It was the 4th of July. And there was a huge like party going on. Everyone in the complex having a huge party. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got it. The next day, there's like... It's like one of those complexes, like, it's just like a U-shape around, like, a little pool. Okay. The next day, there was, like, police spotlights and stuff all around the apartment. And we're like, what the fuck happened? This is when I met um, the neighbors that we're friends with now. And they were like, yeah, like, there was this homeless guy. He jumped in the pool with, like, a bottle of Dawn and was just, like, washing murder blood off himself. So we called it in. And I was like, oh, shit, you know? Okay. And then we saw, like, this one homeless human being blood when this other one to death. And But here's where my regret is, okay? okay? I was going through the parking lot to get, like, to buy cigarettes, okay? I used to smoke. Just it's fine. don't judge me. Anyway. Listen, I smoked a black and, and mild on my way over here. So, no judgment. That's such a weird choice. Was it wine flavor? No, I don't like the wine flavor. I'm more of a jazz flavor okay. fan. All right. All right. That's because you're white. Okay. Yes. So that's the, my that's um, my appropriation. Anyway. Yes. So there was a cop car, okay, and they had caught the guy. He was in the back of the cop car, and so I walked by, and the cop was like, "Yeah, we caught the guy." Blah 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 blah. And the guy looked at me, and he did this thing, like you know, where you point to your eyes, and then you point to the person, like the your next look, like that. And then I was like, I'm not even the one that called it in. Obviously, it was a white girl that called it in. I don't do that. And so I'm still worried that when he gets out of prison, I'm going to be, like, on his list. I should move. You should move. I, well, here's the, 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 the tricky part here is I didn't hear, I mean, this sounds like, this is a regret, sure. But this isn't like. A wacky regret, and this is why. And this is where I'm having trouble. So I'm going to put you in the in the queue. We're going to tisk, we're going to confer. Okay. We're going to see how many points we can give you okay. for this. And I think we have we have somebody else calling back in too. Yeah, we have another call. We have call. We have one more call. I'm going to say, hold on, before we go any further, I think we should figure out how many points to give Sarah, and then we got to wrap things up. We'll have this one final call, and then we'll see what's going to go on with our vi- potential victors. Okay. I mean, I think. As as much as I enjoyed Sarah's storytelling, and I'm and I am worried about her, uh, I'm, wor- I'm worried about her health, and I'm worried about her safety. Um, but I I think that maybe she uh, should focus on moving, and not yeah. and in that case, I mean, if she's about to move, which she should, Sarah, you should move. I don't want to get her address because then she's going to win a prize that is going to go, that's and that's going to be point. evidence for later. I don't want to get. I don't want to be part of Sarah's terrible story later on. It's important to protect yourself, Jay. Exactly. I'm protecting myself here, Sarah. And as much as I enjoyed your story, and I hope you call back in another time, it's not going to be. You're not going to be able to top Tootsie. 
So thank you so much, Sarah. And get to somewhere safe so we can send you an actual prize when you're out of this weird murder complex. Um, okay. What's the age rating? There is none, Malcolm XOXO. You can call back in when we do the show after this. We got one final caller. Let's see if they... Chewing gum. Chewing gum. Chewing gum. Chewing gum. You are on the air. I'm chewing gum. Hi, chewing gum. I'm literally chewing gum. You're chewing gum right now. I hear you doing that. Yeah, it's pretty loud. No, that's me. It's so painful. This is my existence. You're a piece, you're a piece of gum inside someone's mouth? Oh boy! What flavor are you? Oh, I don't. I don't remember. It's gone now. I think it was mint. How long have you been in this person's mouth for? It feels like an eternity, but I think five minutes. I mean, the, I'm gonna guess right out the bat. This is probably what your biggest regret you made this week was was getting in this person's mouth. Absolutely. Oh, man. I said I said to my, my brothers and sisters in the package, I said, I said, I'll go first. I'll be the worst one. Don't be a hero chewing gum. That's on you. You can't be <laughs> a is. hero. That's your you know, own fault. They, they said they said to me, they said that if you if, if if you're the first piece of gum, you'll be you'll be chewed and spit out in no time. But if you're the last one, you'll be savored. They um, were wrong. We have some questions from the chat. First of all, they want to say cum or gum, but I'm pretty sure it's gum, right? You're not you're not next to any cum in the mouth that you're in, are you? <laughs> nope. Thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness indeed. Because that's the perfect time to chew gum, I would assume, is right after <laughs> there's cum in there. Um, and the other question we have from the chat is, uh, can you blow a bubble or no? Oh, boy. Maybe that's the way I can escape. Hold on. Oh, 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 no, I can't. Oof. I'm trident gum. I'm terrible. Oh, it's okay, chewing gum. Listen, I'm going to give you some points real quick. But you also, wait, if you've just started existing, you can't get drunk. Hold on. You're a baby. And that's right. Chewing I'm gum. I'm a tiny little dead chewing baby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, as a piece of sentient chewing gum, unfortunately, that means you can't, you would dissolve in alcohol, so you're not going to be able to get drunk and compete. But, damn, I hope you make it out of that mouth or, or get swallowed and survive in the stomach for seven years. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's been fun. What? What? Bye, chewing gum. Bye-bye. That's actually a pretty good regret. I would give that an actual 500 point. That's a 500 point regret right there. But... That does mean it's not enough to beat our current champion, our winner for this week, Tootsie. So let's put Tootsie back on the line. Let's say our congratulations, and then we're going to get out of here because Tootsie won 600 points, and Tootsie is going to make it into the high scoreboard, which is right over there. Tootsie? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, well, this has been one of the best moments of my entire week. Tootsie, I'm so happy that we can help your week out get to be improved um you might want to get some knives of your own and become a chef if you catch my drift uh and we'll figure out we'll figure out the rest from there but we're going to send you this book uh of angsty poetry uh that is written some of it by me and some of it by my fellows from the elon university uh department of english and creative writing and i hope you can find some strength in that well, that, that is very, very kind of you, and I appreciate your you listening and caring about my story. That's all we're here for is to listen and care and t for you to tell us about your uncomfortable situations. Tyler's going to get your info so we can send you your prize. Thanks again for playing. Uh, folks, th this is all the time we have. We got, uh, we got three minutes until Wiz World Live is live here on Pack Theater TV. The channel where you've got stuff going on all night. We got stuff going on all night, all week, all month, and 
I would say all year. I'm guessing probably all year. I don't know what's going on when everybody gets vaccinated and restrictions get lifted. But thank you so much for tuning into the Discomfort Zone and calling in. We will be back in two weeks uh, to hear more of your foibles and your stories. Malcolm XOXO, we will see you back then. We will see all of you back then. Uh, but everybody else, have a great night and stay tuned to PAC TV. Wizworld Live is on in three minutes. Bye-bye.